to the sixth and final episode of the Flow and Flourish podcast launch series. I have been getting nothing but great feedback from you all. So thank you for supporting me and connecting with me across social media. I am so overjoyed and thankful that you are loving this as much as I do. I pour my heart and soul into each and every episode. And as long as I'm helping at least one person, my job is done. If this is your first time here, welcome to your tribe of sister friends where we talk openly and honestly about the challenges we face being working women with competing priorities as a mom, having a significant other, being the go-to person for everybody, and many other hats that we wear. This is the safe space to let it out get guidance, and help you increase your capacity so that you can truly create a flow between your home life and your work life. Here, we believe that when you flow effortlessly, you flourish tremendously in every area of your life, which allows you to show up refreshed, productive, and whole from the inside out. So if you haven't done so, I invite you to go back to the very first episode so you can get to know me and the pillars that we use to support us along the way. Each pillar is interrelated and will help you no matter where you are in your own journey. Y'all, before we jump into this faith flow, can I just say I really can't believe that we are already at episode six. Time is flying and so is the month of September. Where did the summer go? I feel like it was literally just May a few weeks ago. Time flies when you're having fun, right? I just realized though that I never really mentioned where I'm from, but I am a Chicago native and spent about eight or so years in Wisconsin during elementary school. So I'm a tried and true Midwest girl. I'm still in the Chicagoland area, and why I'm telling you all of this will make sense in a second. Can I just say that I am not ready for winter? I mean, I like the fall, but if you're from Chicago, you already know that we really only have two, well, three seasons. We have winter, summer, and construction. We might get fall or spring weather for like a day or two, but then we jump full blown into the next major season. So I'm really considering becoming a snowbird and living in Florida during the winter months because the way my body's set up, cold weather is not my friend. I seriously believe I had to be a mermaid in a previous life and I belong on somebody's tropical island. So pray for me, okay? Speaking of prayer, we are talking all about the faith flow pillar today. I mentioned in the last episode that what really got me through my cash flow issues was prayer. But to be honest, this pillar is what has helped me be held together on every single level. In this pillar, I help you focus on tapping into your faith, whatever that may be, to support you in creating the balance you need to show up fully wearing those various hats that you do oh so well. Now you'll hear me say God, and I want you to apply that to whatever you believe and however you connect with the creator. There is no judgment here, and the only requirement is that you believe in something bigger than yourself. Now, personally, I believe in Jesus, but I also burn sage, meditate, believe in chakra alignment, and I pray. It's really all about what works for you, so know that you're in good company, okay? So far, I've shared a few of my personal experiences and how faith has played a role in my life. But if I had to choose one run in with God that I remember like yesterday, it would have to be in 2007. I was living in Madison, Wisconsin, and had been in a physical, emotional, and mentally abusive relationship for a few years. And honestly, I was comfortable being uncomfortable because it was easier than dealing with my fear of being alone. I was minding my business at work one day, literally sitting at my desk, basking in the ambiance of how great things were outside of my heart flow pillar. And... My spirit told me to resign and move back to Chicago. I was like, excuse me? You want me to do what? (laughs) Keep in mind, I was a single mom, had been living on my own for a few years at this point, and had just been hired permanently into a role that I absolutely loved. Almost immediately after that 
feeling that came over me. My manager came to my desk and out of nowhere started telling me about how her and her mom were in in an abusive relationship. And the only thing that saved her and her mom's life was that her mom left and moved across the country. I really don't think I heard anything else after that because I was in shock and thinking to myself like, seriously, you just told me to go and I was trying to figure out why. And less than 30 seconds later, you send this lady who I never told I was in an abusive relationship to tell me this story and answer my question. That night, I tried to shake off what my spirit was telling me, tried to forget the conversation my manager had with me, and tried to get rid of the thoughts that were racing through my head. I even prayed for another sign of confirmation because what I felt I was being divinely guided to do meant that I would have to uproot me and my daughter and move back in with my mom and three younger siblings. I didn't want to do that, but then I remembered all the times I asked God to get me out of this relationship that I didn't even know how I ended up in in the first place. After receiving yet another confirmation, the next morning when I went to work, I put in my notice and I thanked my manager for sharing what she'd shared yesterday. And I opened up about what was going on in my personal life. She said she had no idea, but felt moved to tell me what she went through in that moment. We both cried and she said she didn't want to lose me, but that when God speaks, you move. Scared, uncomfortable, not having it figured it all out, and you move. Thirteen and a half years later, it's still the best decision I ever made, and I'm so grateful that I was obedient. Everything I was worried about fell into place almost like magic from being offered a job at a booming technology company in downtown Chicago, making more than I was making in Madison to get in an apartment, finding a daycare and get in a new car because I left everything behind literally took me, my baby and our clothes. All within a max of three months, all of this happened, like all of it came together perfectly. I was actually offered the job the day I got back to Chicago, so I knew it was all divine. Now, there were bumps in the road along the way, but I trusted what I felt in my spirit and I didn't look back. So, you know, I love definitions. So I want to define faith here for you. According to Webster, it's defined as a firm belief in something for which there is no proof. It's having complete trust and confidence in someone or something. From a biblical standpoint, Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. What that translates to me is that faith is not an intellectual exercise. Instead, it's a belief that leads you to action. You've heard that faith without works is dead, right? So take a second and think about an area in your life that's testing your faith. I'll wait. Once you have it, answer honestly. Are you exercising faith in that area? And if so, what does that look like for you? If you aren't putting faith to work, what's stopping you? Who or what you believe in should be a non-issue because I believe that faith is universal, just like love. So what's blocking your faith? On my journey, I've learned that more often than not, what we do says more about what we believe than what we say out of our mouths. And this ties into all the pillars we've talked about so far, not just here. This is about your beliefs, words, and actions being in alignment and how when they are not aligned, things don't usually go how you want them to. Maybe it's that you had faith and put actions towards a situation and it still didn't go as planned. I feel that because it's happened to me too and sometimes put my faith in a bad space. But that hasn't been a constant experience. And to be real, when things didn't pan out, it's always been a blessing in disguise for me. Faith is the bridge that connects what you can't yet see to what you feel in your spirit needs to be done. It's not rational, pretty, or convenient. And in my experience, it's been quite the opposite. 
When my spirit has said, do X, Y, or Z, it's made no logical sense and was pretty damn inconvenient, if I must say. I have stories and testimonies for days. And what I can say is that it has always worked out in the end. So when my logic and faith conflict, I have to remind myself of those past situations and call on them to renew my faith. So I ask you, What do you need to remember about what God has done in your life when you've acted on faith? It's so easy, especially now, to get distracted by what you see with your physical eyes and forget what you've experienced with your spirit. And on top of that, when you are so busy being busy and don't make the time to get quiet and listen to your spirit, you risk missing the message and breadcrumbs of how your steps are being ordered. I've been guilty of this plenty of times and I'm not proud of that, but I am human. So I give myself grace. And when things get hectic or chaotic around me, I get still, I get quiet and I listen to my spirit. And I have never been led in the wrong direction. Not once. If you take Anything else from this today, I want you to know how important it is for you to call on your experiences you've had when you needed to depend on faith to get you on the other side of what you're going through. I'm a planner and I am slowly but surely getting free from the need to control everything. So trust in something I had not seen and that didn't make sense to me used to be extremely challenging for me, but I've gotten better with time, practice, And trust in what I feel, no matter how out there it may be. In order for you to do that, though, you have to learn how to get quiet and be in tune with your spirit. You can't do that if you're exhausted, stressed out, and spreading yourself and stretching yourself like Stretch Armstrong. This is why self-care is so important too. It gives you the space to be yourself and positions you to be open and receptive to hear God. Our jobs on earth are to show up in excellence to glorify God. And that's impossible if you don't have balance between what you're managing at work and how you're managing your life at home. Keep this with you as you face challenges during the week and remember to make time to get quiet, even if it's for five minutes. You have to remember that small steps lead to big changes. So I want to hear about what actions you're taking. As always, thank you for taking time out of your schedule to listen to me. I pray that this has helped you. If it did, be a good sister friend and share it with someone else who you know needs to hear it. Also, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to this podcast and rate this another episode you've already listened to. Find me on Facebook, IG, or on my website if you want to work with me. I'll be taking applications for my group coaching program soon, so make sure you head over to NicoleRone.com to stay up to date. Enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you for being part of this community, and I look forward to helping you create balance between your personal and professional life without ever having to sacrifice yourself, your family, and what matters most to you. Talk to you soon.